Hello, welcome back to the channel. It is Dan Nocturne Knives. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about sharpening choils. That is this thing right here. So most of this video is going to be talking about how to add or expand a sharpening choil, but I'll also talk about what the choil does, why it's important, and why you might want to do this. So there's a lot of, of useful info in here. Hopefully you'll get a lot out of it. First I'll talk about what the sharpening choil is. So this I'll use this pencil as a pointer. This notch, this cutout right here, that's a sharpening choil. A choil means like a cut cutout or a notch or a groove, something like that. You can see it's so right here at the heel of the edge. And what the choil does is allow you to sharpen the edge easily and evenly all the way down to the heel. So on most blades, you have going from the full stock thickness, the flat here, to the grind, you have this this gradual slope right here, which is called the plunge grind. Now it's a gradual slope, so it doesn't go immediately from the full thickness down to the final behind the edge thickness. So if the edge comes up too close to the flat, then the thickness behind the edge will increase down here at the heel. So the sharpening choil is a notch that removes the heel of the edge, pushes the start of the edge up and allows it to clear that plunge grind. You can see here how the reflection changes on the plunge grind. See it changing on the slope? That's how you can tell the slope is there because you can see the reflection changing on it. So if the sharpening choil is too small or too short, then it won't actually clear this plunge grind and the thickness behind the edge will increase here. So that's what we see happening is the edge is behind this plunge grind. It catches the plunge grind, so the thickness from here, say in the belly of the blade, to the heel increases dramatically, and I'll show you that. So if I take a set of calipers and measure here in the belly of the blade, you can see the behind the edge thickness coming in about 18 thousandths or so. Then I go here at the heel, right at the heel, right behind the edge, same spot, you're looking at 26.5 thousandths. So that's a massive that's a massive difference you're talking about about eight thousandths of a difference which is quite significant actually it's going to be that's going to create a large difference in bevel thickness from the belly section to the heel here's an example of a knife that has a 90 degree plunge grind and no choil so spiderco does this really often their plunge grind will go straight down at a 90 degree angle from the full thickness down to the final thickness but it does it in a straight line, so there's no sloping gradual plunge grind. So they can get away with not having a choil. You just need a stone with a sharp corner to be able to get all the way back in here. Knives like these don't necessarily need a sharpening choil. Now, a sharpening choil does make working on these edges easier. It definitely makes them a lot easier to sharpen. Some people like them, some people don't. It's a personal preference. But I've added a lot of choils on spider coats like this, and it definitely makes it a lot easier to sharpen. Here's an example of a knife that I actually just extended the choil on, so now the choil is big enough. If you look here, you can see the plunge grind by how the reflection changes, and the start of the edge is well clear of the plunge grind now. That's what it looks like. And again, I'll show you with some measurements. We'll go in the belly of the blade out well away from the plunge grind. So you're talking about... 14 and a half thousandths. You go back here right to the heel and you're looking at 16. Now one and a half thousandths, that's an acceptable difference. It will create just a very, very minor increase in bevel thickness, not enough to really care about so much. So that's fine. And I didn't want to go any farther because we're just losing cutting edge with every bit I take off here. So that's a fine difference, a couple thousands, sure. But something like this with a difference of eight thousands, that's too much, and it's gonna create a massive flare and smile at the base of the blade. So let's talk now about how to expand or add in your own sharpening choil. So you've got a couple of options here. The cheapest way is going to be with some files. Um, say one like this, this little triangular file. This would be perfect to say you've got a spider coat and you want to add just a little sharpening choil. Get in there with your little triangular file and add just a little notch. 
going to make sharpening easier. That's just fine. Uh, it'll take a little bit of time, a little bit of elbow grease, but it really shouldn't be too hard, especially if you just want a small choil. Uh, for a lot of things, a better option is going to be a round file like this. Ignore the curve in this one. Ideally, you'd want a thin, straight round file. I don't have one on hand. That would be your cheapest option if you just have a file like this. You can add in a little round choil, or you could take this existing one and expand it out with gradually increasing file sizes. Again, very cheap, but it's going to be a bit of a hassle and a little slow. My favorite way is to use a Dremel. So you can get these Dremel tools. They're actually pretty cheap. This is the Dremel Lite. This one's a cordless one. You can get them corded, cord, cordless, a bunch of different varieties. This was like 30 bucks on Amazon or something. I'll link it in the description and this is a good little really good nice little tool for finishing and and manually shaping parts stuff like that here i have this carbide cutting bit this is going to be the best option for making a choil you can also get diamond bits and those work fine but these carbide cutting bits are just going to be better they're going to cut faster and more cleanly and I would recommend getting a larger size bit like this. Here's a janky one I had laying around. You can see how it's really small. That just makes it a lot harder to cut in choils and things like that. A, a nice big bit like this with a lot of surface area makes things way, way easier. Now, it's a little pricey. I'll try and link this one in the description if I can remember what it is. They're a little pricey, but they'll work really well and they'll last a long time. And for this method, you definitely want some protective equipment, so safety glasses and um, a respiratory thing, because you're going to be producing a bunch of little metal shavings that are going to be flying everywhere. So you have a few options when it comes to this. You can either hold the Dremel in your hand and hold the knife in your hand just like this. You could clamp the knife in a vise and use the Dremel, or my favorite option is to actually clamp down your Dremel into a vise, just lightly so it's not going anywhere. And now you can bring the knife to the tool, and I think that makes it a lot easier. And you can be more precise and have more control this way. But however you feel comfortable with holding the Dremel, the holding the knife, whatever, you just want to make sure that the sharp edge of your knife is secured and that nothing's wobbling or moving around because you want to be kind of precise with this. I'm going to take some tape and tape up the edge of this. And this is going to help protect you from the edge and then also the edge if you were to slip with your Dremel at all. I will also tape up and cover the handle up, but you, if you plan on taking the knife apart after this to clean it, you don't have to, but I don't want to take this apart. So I'm going to totally tape up the handle. I've got the knife all taped up, all the cracks up here in the handle, all the gaps are filled in so we won't have metal shavings dropping down into them. Now one other thing I forgot to mention was gloves. You'll want some latex gloves like this nitrile gloves because those little metal shavings, they can irritate your skin and become splinters in your skin. I've had that happen one or two times and it's really annoying. So I definitely recommend some gloves like this. What I'm going to do here is start at the base of the choil and just expand it outwards this way. It doesn't really need to be any deeper. This is a good depth. So I just want to expand it this way down the edge and cut it probably to right here. Although we'll see, I'll, I'm going to measure it with calipers all the way through to know when I, I've removed enough material.
So I'm done here with the Dremel now. I have the choil where I want it in terms of length, depth, and shape. So now I'm just going to finish it off really quick, and then we'll be all finished with this. So you have a couple options here with your choil in terms of finishing. You could just leave it at the cut finish from this carbide, which looks fine. It's a little uneven, a little raggedy, but it's fine in a choil. Um, if you don't really care how the choil looks, cool, that's great. I went ahead and took this aluminum oxide bit, put it in my Dremel, and finished the choil just smooth. I just smoothed out the finish. So that's what this is. That's from that aluminum oxide bit right there. And you can see it's got some kind of deep lines. It's just a little irregular. But honestly, it looks just fine. And in a choil area like this, that's a totally fine finish to leave it at. Because this is for a customer, I'm going to go ahead and finish it just a little bit more. I've got some sandpaper here. This is, I think, 220, although really anything from 150 to 400 is probably going to work just fine here. And take something small and round. I'm just going to use the end of this carbide bit, wrap it around there, and now you can get in this choil and just finish it off with this sandpaper. And this is really quick. It's going to take like a minute. And you just kind of rub and twist it back and forth. And it's going to clean up that finish a lot, make it more consistent, get rid of some of those deeper scratches. So here we are all finished up. You can see this choil finish looks much more consistent. You got those deeper scratches gone. All the scratches are going in the same direction. And it looks nice. You could take this just a little bit further even. You could go up in grits, whatever you want. So now the last thing you want to do is on the edges of the choil here, there's some burr left over. You want to come and just knock that off. And you could do it with your Dremel, with either the carbide or aluminum oxide bit. But I like to do it just with this sandpaper here. It takes barely anything to knock this burr off. Just a little bit of abrasion. You can do it at like a 45 degree angle. And you should be able to run your finger or nail over here. You shouldn't catch a burr is what you're looking for. Here's what it looks like. You can see the choil is significantly larger than it was before. I didn't need to deepen it all, so I really just took it out farther to get it clear of the plunge grind. Now we'll take a couple measurements. So again, going from the belly, you're looking at 18 thousandths or so. Now come back into the choil and looking at 19 thousandths. So this means when we when I sharpen it, the edge bevel will be a consistent thickness from belly to the heel, and this choil is deep enough that it should allow a few sharpenings before I start running into it. And in that case, it can just be expanded farther. Quite an easy process. When you're doing this, some things to watch out for are accidentally running up onto your edge with the bit you're using. It can slip out of the choil and run up on the edge and create a bunch of chips and stuff that you have to clean up during sharpening. I've definitely done that before. It's a real hassle. Try not to do that. It's way easier. It's it's never happened to me when I've locked in the, the Dremel and then come up with the knife. It makes it way easier, I think. Another thing to watch out for is some knives come around and interface with the stop pin using the choil area. So if that's the case, you can't cut into that because it will mess with how the knife stays closed with the detent. Here's kind of an example of that. You can see in here, it's not out of the choil, but in here, the knife comes around as it closes, and that area interfaces with the stop, with the axis lock here. Some knives will come around and it's up here into the choil that interfaces with the stop pin. So you could still cut in and expand the choil. You have, you just have to be sure not to hit the bit that interfaces with the stop pin. Very important. But on a knife like this, the interface for the stop pin is down here behind the flipper. So I'm totally free to expand the sharpening choil as much as I want. And that's the video. I hope you found this video helpful and useful. If you did, please don't forget to go down below, hit that like button, subscribe button if you like knives, sharpening content, all that kind of stuff. It would definitely help me out. Let me know what you think about sharpening choils and edge bevel thickness. Do you not really care, or is it choil all day? Are you going to cut in your own choil if a knife doesn't have it? What do you think? What kind of 
sharpen if you sharpen knives and do work on knives, what's your stance on that? I'd love to know. Drop me a comment. And if you just learned what the choil is and found this helpful, drop a comment. Let me know about it. I'd love to hear that. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you on the next one.